Hello everyone. I would like to welcome you all for the first session of introduction to Big Data Bioinformatics program. This online program is designed for everyone, including students who don't have a background in bioinformatics and biologists to learn about NGS data analysis processing sections, genomics, transcriptomics, and biomedical data science and machine learning. As a result, participants will become proficient in the analysis and interpretation of various types of omics data using bioinformatics, including commonly used statistical and machine learning techniques. My name is Sonali Kadri, and I'm the Omics Logic Community Manager responsible for daily interaction with thousands of users that are a part of our bioinformatics community managed by Pine Biotech. So before we start, start with the talk, I would want to introduce us. We are a US-based bioinformatics company who is working with multiple academic and commercial collaborators to develop easy to use analytical tools. And our mission is to make bioinformatics more accessible. Omics Logic research-based training programs are a result of close collaboration between Pine Biotech and numerous academic institutions that have participated in content evaluation, curriculum review, and project design. Omics Logic is an, inter uh, is an international program that is uh, running in five different regions with over 10,000 users around the world. And due to this fast growth, our team is working with local and regional coordinators that are helping uh, refine local program logistics and leverage our online training resources, adapting them to the needs of students and researchers around the world. Omics Logic programs follow a project-based learning approach using research-grade tools to analyze data from top peer-reviewed journals, Omics Logic training has been completed by participants from 162 countries in over 300 workshops for six different specialization tracks, oncology, infectious diseases, precision medicine, neuroscience, data science for biomedical data, and comprehensive training on omics data analysis as well. So to begin with today's session, let me quickly guide you through the Omics Logic Learn courses, projects, show you how you have to uh, complete your profile, give an overview of the tools and resources associated with the program, and discuss the schedule as well. I would also take you through the communication portals and guide, and guide you through. So once you're signed up on the learn.omicslogic portal, please make sure that you have a complete profile. Now, by completing your profile, I mean you should have a profile. Malika, if you could make a pause here, let's let yes. some people make sure that everybody's registered. I don't know where we were running with this. Let's uh, let's make sure that everybody signed up first. Right. So, if you have signed up, please put number one or yes or something like that in chat. If you have not signed up yet, this is a free sign up. So please let us know once you have navigated to the link. The link is in the chat. Okay, so let's wait for a minute for everyone to quickly sign up. And those uh, who have completed their sign up, they can uh, complete their profile, add their profile picture, add their uh, bio and also connect their social media accounts. Yes, Aurora. So if you are, uh, if you have an account, that's nice. Make sure that your profile is complete. And uh, if you would like to re uh, register after the first session, you can. So now, Sunarika, if you could go to your own profile and maybe show, how do you get to the profile? How do you complete these things? Can you let us know? Yes, yeah, sure, Ilya. Yeah, thank you.
Okay, so once you have completed your sign up, you need to go to your profile and make sure that you have an updated uh, profile picture. Also link in your social accounts and have a brief bio about yourself and make sure that as a part of the program, you must have the uh, introduction to big data bioinformatics badge on your profile. And you would be able to also view the program that you have enrolled for if you have completed your enrollment for this particular program. And also you would be able to view all the courses that uh, you are uh, undergoing or have completed and would be able to find your certificates in the certificate section itself under your profile. Now let so me just- person, If a person, somebody doesn't see the badge for bioinformatics for this yes, program, and introduction to bioinformatics. If they don't see a badge, then please let us know so that we can just add you to the program page. Now, uh, looking the uh, like having the badge is important on your profile because that means that you have the access to the program page. Now, what this program page is and why is it important? Let me just take you through that. So this is the program page for uh, the program introduction to big data bioinformatics. And here on the program page, you would be able to uh, see all the session details, the top topic and uh, the title and all the topics that are going to be covered in that particular session and also the schedule for that and you would be able to look uh, at the zoom session link as well which would be along with these sessions uh, as well and once the session is complete then you will be able to look at the recordings of that particular session and once the recording has been uploaded you are supposed to click on the complete session icon so that uh, you complete the sessions and get the certificate under the profile section that i mentioned so this is how you're going to look at the zoom session link and also complete the session and if you have any any doubts, we can uh, we can communicate via the Slack channel as well. I'll just take you to the Slack channel uh, in the slides later. Also, you would be getting five hundred points for completing a course and hundred points for running a pipeline, hundred uh, points for updating your profile, and ten points for your group activity. And throughout the course, you will be given directions to access the T-Bioinfo platform for bioinformatics processing and analysis of transcriptomics data. And the platform includes demo pipelines as well as data management and analysis cloud infrastructure to run bioinformatics pipeline. And different stages of analysis could be performed in different sections of this multi-omics platform. As I told that we will be communicating via the Slack channel, I would be sending the sessions in white recording after each session and also the assignment questions in the Slack channel itself. You can also take your doubts and let us know if you face any technical issue in the channel itself. I've sent the Slack invite to everyone who has enrolled for the program. So please find the invitation in your mailbox and accept it. And if you have not yet received the link, then please check your spam box or let me know so that I can send the invitation again. Uh, it would be great if Navya, you could just share the link. Thank you so much. Navya has shared the link to the Slack channel and also to the various groups on WhatsApp, Telegram, LinkedIn. You can be a part of it and also stay updated with all our upcoming programs. And uh, also for your doubts, you have the link to the Slack channel. Yes, Ojasvi, thank you so much. Only the registered participants will be able to see the badges on their learn profile. And now I would like to pass it on to uh, Pine Biotech CEO, Ilya Brodsky to take this session ahead. Over to you, Ilya. Thank you, Sumanika. If you could please make me co-host. Yes. Uh, Sunita Dash. Yes. What? Sorry, Ilya Sunita Dash, I think you are not enrolled with us right now. So, so Narika, you can discuss that with him in the chat. That's why we have a chat box. Can you? Thank you. Okay. So welcome everyone to this program. And just to clarify, I don't think it was very clear what Sonarika was mentioning. Since this is an open session for anyone to join, this is the first session of a training program that is starting today on 24th of September. And it's going to last for one month until October 26th. 
During this program, we will cover a variety of topics in bioinformatics, which will, I will briefly introduce. But just before I get into the topics, I want to clarify how these programs work. After you've signed up on this portal, the Onyx Logic Learn portal, if you are interested to join this program, you'll have to navigate to this tab called Programs. And in this program tab, you search for Introduction to Big Data Bioinformatics, right here. You will find other programs here as well, but this is the program that we're going to be discussing today. Once you are on this page, you can request more information, which will also give you the link to today's webinar, how to join, or you can see the pricing to actually purchase your access for the whole month. Now, what is going to be covered in this program is described right here on the schedule, but a lot of the resources that we're going to leverage are also available in an asynchronous format, which means that you can join the program to participate in live discussions and hands-on practical exercises guided by a mentor, or you can gain access to the same exact materials without this kind of mentorship. And that will be just a basic subscription that you can get for the Learn Omics Logic portal. I hope that that is clear to everyone. And if you do have any questions, so Monica and others are available in the chat so you can ask questions. In the meantime, I want to introduce you briefly to some of the topics about bioinformatics and what will be covered in this particular program, and then show you uh, a couple of things related to what we will have, uh, some of the exercises, the hands-on exercises that we will do. So what is bioinformatics? Bioinformatics is the intersection of computational technologies related to data analysis and biology. And so we typically analyze biological data, but as you have seen, the program is called big data bioinformatics. So why big data bioinformatics? What is the difference? Bioinformatics has led to many discoveries in a variety of different domains related to clinical, biotechnology, and other industry applications. And in many cases, it has been driven by our ability to both generate a lot of data and analyze and integrate this kind of data. A lot of this has been tremendously shaped by novel technologies over the past decade. So the whole field of omics has developed maybe in the past couple of decades, but it has accelerated its development over the past decade. And so as a result of having this kind of data, we are seeing a lot of ability to find novel diagnostic uh, uh, methods and identify novel therapeutics. And so a lot of what we're gonna be talking about in this program is going to be related to the application of bioinformatics in the biomedical domain. And because of the, this new type of data, we're talking about ability to sequence tumors, ability to identify novel uh, variation in pathogen genomes. We're talking about ability to analyze data from patients and identify patterns that are unique at the whole system level or at individual cell level. And so to understand all of these different topics, we've designed this program that will focus on a variety of different types of omics data that you can actually learn how to analyze throughout this program. So here I have a slide that talks a little bit about several different types of omics data. This includes phenomics, a collection of phenotypic data, genomic data, genomic variation, like single nucleotide variations, copy number variations that is in the genome, in the DNA, epigenomic data, or data that describes epigenetic mechanisms of regulation of gene expression, actual gene expression data, where we analyze levels of transcript and gene expression in a tissue or a cell or the full organism, 
And after this, we have proteomics and metabolomics. So several different types of omics data. This data is widely available. So many different labs around the world with experts generate data sets following their experiments. And we have the benefit of having free access to a lot of this data with a description of what the data is generated by which mechanism to investigate a particular question or around a particular design of a topic or a project. And so a lot of what we're gonna be doing in this particular program is we're going to be leveraging these public domain data sets around topics like oncology, neuroscience, and infectious diseases to understand how this data can answer biological questions and what are some of the key terms and techniques you need to understand to be able to analyze this data properly. So the introduction to bioinformatics program will give you a sense of novel technologies, emerging technologies like next generation sequencing and the way that they are continuing to develop. It will give you an understanding of genomic data analysis. So what are DNA variants and mutations and how to analyze genomic data to find specific types of variation at the DNA level. Introduction to transcriptomic data analysis, where we will identify gene and isoform expression quantification and analysis. We'll also talk a little bit about statistical methods of analysis, as well as machine learning. So what do you need to know to read papers and maybe try some of these methods on your own? You will be introduced to scripting in Python in R so that you understand at least how to get started. And I will show you today a couple of examples for that. And then you will be left with a selection of projects that come from curated data sets that were extracted from peer reviewed publications and public domain repositories. So you can actually try to replicate somebody else's analysis and see how that analysis can inform different types of insights. Uh, about different domains like oncology and others. So as I mentioned, a lot of what we're going to be doing is going to be found as an asynchronous version of what we will cover in live sections uh, on this portal, learnomicslogic.com. So I want to briefly show you how to find the associated asynchronous resources so that you can get started right away. The resources could be found in several different ways. So you have a search bar where you can search for any topic. You have tags right here. And you also have specialized collections. And the collections are organized right here. And what, we'll get, what we will be taking a look at today is a collection called Getting Started. So let me show you how to find this information. Let's go to this link called Courses. And please let me know when you are there. So you can put number one or yes in the chat. Thank you. Okay, so once you are here, you will find that you have your profile and under your profile, you can see a few stats about your progress and activity. For example, my total achievements, how many courses I completed, how many lessons I completed, lesson steps, and code blocks. And I will show you today where to find all of these different elements. Here you have a section that is based on popularity. So uh, as you complete your profile, as you develop your profile, you complete different topics and different lessons, the system will learn from your activity and will start recommending most popular courses for people that have a similar profile to you. Then down here, you will find two different kinds of courses. Some of them will start as a course. So for example, you'll see course. These are technical tutorials and theoretical tutorials to explain a particular topic in general. And then you can also search for project. So these are project examples. As I mentioned, these are curated data sets extracted from uh, publications and turned into an explanation an illustration of a particular bioinformatics analysis method in the context of that particular research 
project. Here you have tags. For example, if I cancel project, I can look for projects or courses right here. I can also look for data science courses, or I can look for uh, genomics courses and projects, etc. So this is just a way to navigate some of the content right here. Down here below, you will find different collections. And so the collection we wanna look at is this collection called Getting Started. So if you click on Getting Started, I can actually share this link right here. So this is the link that we wanna take a look at today, just so that you understand what are the different things that are going to be included in this program and kind of where you can get started for this program. So as you can see, there is course one, Introduction to Bioinformatics, which is a course that talks about the applications of bioinformatics in healthcare, pharmaceutical, biotechnology, agriculture, and other domains. Another course that you can find here is a course called Bites and Molecules. This course provides you with an overview of terminology and different elements that you have to know about to be able to start using bioinformatics. So we'll start from the very beginning. What is DNA? What are nucleotides? How do they organize into chromosomes? And how do you analyze genomic data? What is this genomic data? So it's a course for beginners. You can see at the bottom of each course, there's a difficulty score. And so all of these courses are going to be very low on the difficulty score. So for those of you that are just getting started, these are some of the things that you can start with. Now, some of these courses are also going to introduce you to coding, right? So we talked a little bit about coding. So I want to just show you a brief illustration of what that means. You will see here that there are just introductory things that you have to know to be able to get started. For example, how to load data, how to visualize, how to read DNA sequences, and how to uh, convert DNA to RNA. So just kind of getting started, right? The same type of material is available for Python as well. But a lot of what we're going to be doing will require some much more advanced methods of analysis. And so for those advanced methods of analysis, we're actually going to rely on the tBioInfo platform. So once you have registered on the portal, and if you have completed your registration for the program yesterday, you should already be able to use your credentials to log in on the server. So the, the, the time that it takes for the password to be generated on the platform is about 24 hours. So if you have just signed up today, you probably still don't have access to the platform. But if you signed up over the past week, you should be able to use the same credentials that you use on the Omics Logic portal here on this platform. So please go to this link. I shared the link in chat, and I will show you a few different sections that we're going to review in this program. And please let me know once you're here. All right, thank you. Okay, so let, let's take a look at some of the different sections that we're going to be reviewing. So a lot of what we're gonna be talking about is big data. A lot of the big data comes from next generation sequencing. And so right here, this section, refers to next generation sequencing applications. There are different types of applications related to the different types of omics data. So here we have transcriptomic data, genomic data. We also have non coding DNA and RNA, as well as metagenomic data right here. So several different types of omics data. And these are what is called processing uh, sections. So let's take a look at this first section to understand what that means. So this first section is called RNA-seq. RNA-seq refers to processing next generation sequencing transcriptomic data. So if we go into this dropdown, we will see several demo pipelines 
these demo pipelines will really illustrate how this platform works and how we will leverage it throughout this program. So if you go to this first demo, RNA-seq cell line project, click on it, you should be able to see what I am seeing on my screen. Now, obviously you have to be signed in before you get here. If you don't have a sign in, but you've registered for the program, you just have to wait uh, a little bit longer for that to be, uh, when will T-Bio docking be activated, Zara is asking. So there already is a Docker system behind the T-Bio info. You can run it on Google Cloud, uh, but that requires a research license. Okay, so for uh, please let me know if you see what I see on my screen. All right, thank you. All right. Oh, okay, great. So, so what, what is this interface? This interface hides the complexity of a typical step for loading, processing, and running different kinds of algorithms behind a user-friendly interface. The user-friendly interface puts any script into a button. And some of these buttons will have some settings. So if you click on start, you'll see here how we use this platform for education. One of the major challenges in learning next generation sequencing data analysis is understanding the logic behind what step do I need to take to get my data into a certain format that I need it to be in. And in the RNA-seq pipeline, there are several different steps that we have to understand logically. The first one is pre-processing or how to clean up the raw data before we start the analysis. The second one is mapping or how do we connect the randomly generated reads to the proper position on the genome. And the final step is quantification. So how do we actually count how many reads fell onto a particular gene? As you will learn throughout this program, this is not a simple process to understand and we'll go into great detail to explain what are the reads, what are we trimming, how do we map them, what are the different strategies for mapping, and how to quantify and analyze the resulting gene expression table. If you scroll down, you will see here an example pipeline. So let's try to recreate this pipeline together and see what will be the output. So as you can see, the first is start. We already selected that. Then we go to Trimomatic. From Trimomatic, we go to PCR Clean. Then we go to a button called Bowtie to T. And finally, RSEM Expression Table. And so after we go through these steps, we connect it to the end to run the pipeline. So this pipeline is, as you can see, color coded. It separates these different steps into colors. Blue is for, what do you think the blue means? We just looked at it, but I'm just checking to see if you remember. Pre-processing, excellent. So what do you think pre-processing means? Good afternoon. Cleaning up the data, exactly. So we have raw data, we need to clean it up. And so the way we clean it up, as we will see, is trimming the reads and eliminating some extra reads. Then we go to red. What do you think red means? Mapping, excellent. So here we have mapping. As you can see, it says right here, mapping on transcripts, right? So we need to remember what are we actually mapping to? And we'll talk about this in greater detail in a little bit. And then here we have green. It says here expression levels, but it's really quantification. How do we count? whatever we have mapped onto a particular region. So let's click on OK. And now, as you can see, several of these buttons are highlighted, and some of them are not highlighted. So based on what you remember, try to replicate the same pipeline that we just saw on the screen. And once you're done, once you have clicked on End, let me know. I'll give it 30 seconds.
All right, did anyone complete the pipeline? Excellent. George, George? anyone else? Okay, let's try to do this together. So we go from start to pre-processing, trimmatic. What does trimmatic do? It trims the reads. As you can see, there's a good portion of the read and a bad portion of the read. So we trim it. Okay, yes. After trimmatic, PCR clean. And you can see that it's the only option available. So what are we cleaning here? Here we are cleaning the bridge PCR amplification, which means that we are reducing some of the duplicate reads that have a bias just because PCR has a bias towards certain sequences. The only option that, well, the only two options that we have are two of the mapping algorithms, HiSat2 and Bowtie2T. What is the difference? As you can see, HiSat2 combines several different steps mapping on genome, exon detection, and mapping on junctions. The Bowtie 2T is a more simple version that just maps it on transcripts. To understand what the difference is, we have certain coursework that you can complete if you're not familiar with the difference between transcripts or mapping on genome. But for now, let's just click on Bowtie 2T. And this algorithm is an algorithm that is described in this publication. So if you want to learn more about this publication, you can click on this and read more about it. After we have mapped on transcripts, we are using RSEM or RNA-seq using expectation maximization to quantify the level of gene expression. And so as a result from raw reads or fast Q files, we will end up with a gene expression table. So after you click here, you click on OK, and the only step left is end. Once you click on end, you should see the screen that I see. So again, I'll just wait a little bit. Please let me know when you have gotten to the same result so that we can move on. I want to move on together, make sure that everybody's following along. All right, thank you, Eman. Anyone else? If you're here, you can click on this right here and see several data sets that you can download. So please let me know once you're here. Yes, I will get to that in a second, Iman. I will show you what I am describing today is just one of the exercises that we will be doing later on in the program in greater detail, but I also will show you an asynchronous version of this tutorial so that you can follow along and learn about all the different options. Okay, so if you're here, you will see several different outputs. Cell lines, clinical subtypes, cell lines expression data normalized and annotated, exon expression cell lines, expression gene cell lines, and expression isoform cell lines. So really several different outputs are provided to us from a single pipeline. And so what we want to take a look at is at cell lines, expression data, normalized, and annotated. So please click on this file, and you will see that it will be downloaded onto your computer. So why... and what was the input data? Great question. So I will explain in a second, and I will actually show you how to find all of this information in the asynchronous tutorial. So I'm just going to open this table in Excel to see what is in the data. And the reason we're looking at it is because we want to understand what is the meaning of big data bioinformatics? How did omics data really change the way that we have to handle and process data from traditional bioinformatics. So let me know once you've gotten this opened or if you're following along, just watching me, you will see here that I have genes in this column, ID. And right here, I have names of cell lines. These are different types of breast cancer cell lines. 
So if you count the total number of genes, you will see that there's close to 7,000 genes. And if you go to the top and scroll to the end, you will see that there's actually about 50 different cell lines right here. So what is the purpose of RNA-seq? RNA-seq helps us understand the levels of gene expression so that we can find meaningful patterns in this data. So if we take a look at one gene, for example, the first one, and we can create here a bar plot just to see what this data looks like, we will see that this particular gene has a certain profile. Sometimes it is upregulated, sometimes it is downregulated. And since we have so many different sections down at the bottom, the question becomes, well, which gene or which collection of genes from this whole data set could actually mean something of interest to somebody who is exploring cancer and specifically different types of breast cancer. And that is the challenge because as you can see, if I have to manually go through each individual gene and I have to look at the profile to determine what could this mean, it becomes a tedious and very complicated task because I have over 7,000 genes. Now, many genes are going to be informative and many genes are going to be non-informative. But also I have over 70 different samples. And in many projects that you will take a look at, there's actually thousands or hundreds of samples. And so the task, as you can see, for a manual analysis becomes too complicated, too complex. And so I have to rely on computational technologies to really make sense of what is going on. So now let me show you, this is a snapshot of something that you can learn in this program, but also something that you can learn on your own based on your interest. If your interest is transcriptomics, you can just go into the courses tab right here and search for transcriptomics. And you will see here a full course that explains how RNA helps us investigate protein expression and correlate that with phenotype. What are the different types of techniques to quantify mRNA? How RNA-seq and next-generation sequencing is generating this kind of data? So Iman, you were asking, where's the input data? So that will explain to you what the input data looks like. Then it will talk about the steps that we took and what are the actual inputs and outputs for every step. Every button that we took has an input, has an output. Then you will learn about how to build several different pipelines, just like what we did today. Then you will see how the data is prepared for downstream analysis, how to explore this complex data set using the platform. So again, no coding involved, how to perform statistical tests. And here you have a button to load more. And you will see that this will include other types of analysis, including downstream analysis, so annotation of genes and pathway analysis, what you would typically see in analysis of differential gene expression, advanced statistical techniques like factor regression analysis, and all the way to supervised and unsupervised machine learning. And after that, you can try to explore some of the same methods in Python and in R, okay? But this is too much for just this one month, okay? This one month subscription actually gives you access to all the courses, but let me show you which courses are we actually going to complete during this one month, okay? So again, if we go back to courses, you can go to getting started. This is the collection to getting started. And here you can see some of the asynchronous courses that you will be able to complete during this one month. You have access to more, but during this one month, we expect to complete all of these. Now, in addition to this, if you go back to the program, and remember the name of this program is Introduction to Big Data Bioinformatics, right here, Introduction to Big Data Bioinformatics. 
If you've already registered for the program, you will see that today we are doing this introduction to big data and biology. So you already saw the program tools and resources. The ones that have been registered have been added already to the Slack channel. And maybe you can say hello on the Slack channel so we can all connect. You've seen the different tools and resources for this program, including the courses, projects, and how to get to your profile. And you've seen an overview of the TBioInfo analytical platform. And so before we turn to our Q&A session, I want to briefly summarize what are the different topics you will see and how they apply to a variety of sections that we have covered on this portal. So the omics logic idea is to provide you with a logical overview of different types of analysis techniques to help you identify how these techniques could be applied in these fields right here, oncology, infectious diseases, neuroscience, and agriculture. So after you learn about some of these basic methods and the logic of analysis of this data, you can choose, would you like to apply it to oncology, infectious diseases, neuroscience, or agriculture? And once you've understood what the research question is in one of those domains, then hopefully you'll be able to link the research question to some of the technical steps that you need to take to analyze data and find answers. And so to briefly illustrate how this will work, I want to invite Dr. Harpreet Kaur, who is going to be your mentor, and her expertise is in cancer genomics, where she has published numerous publications and has a lot of expertise analyzing such data. So Dr. Harpreet, over to you. Thank you, Ilya. Let me share my screen. Hello, everyone. My name is Harpreet Kaur and I have a PhD in bioinformatics. In my current role, I'm curriculum developer and research consultant, and I am the mentor in, I'm one of the mentor in this program. So today we are going to learn a bit about big data. And then in the next session onward, then we are going to learn what are the different omics, uh, omics types of the big data. Okay, so let me first show you like what are the major characteristics of a data that makes a data as a big data. So there are the major five Bs that can define or make a data to a big data. The first one is volume, that is amount of the data is huge. For example, we know that uh, NGS RNA seq data, which yield information about thousands of the genes for or millions of SNP. So eventually, overall, they conclude or contribute to the volume. Next is variety. So usually, a data is unstructured and can be assembled in many different ways. Often at times, the same phenomena can be described many different ways depending upon the type of the sequencer machine or depending upon the preparation technique or handling in a particular lab. So then the uh, next is the value that is the information we get out of the data is dependent upon many factors or aspects. That include data noise, technical uh, error rate, and complete. Eventually, the completeness of information is provided by various factors. Then there is variety. That is, uh, many a times some samples can have a low coverage, 
while other have high coverage but not the full sequences others might be generated by old machine or maybe generated by new machine so including all the data together complete the picture about a particular data then is velocity so this is another important aspect because as we know that with the time number of techniques are also changing for example sanger sequencing replaced by shotgun sequencing sequencing eventually now a day single cell sequencing so as the new data is getting added and eventually the this data is continuously growing before even our understanding about the already existing information so all these factors eventually contribute or a make a data as a big data now let's look at the history of the genomics data it's been like 70 years since the structure and the function of dna was discovered and just emerged with the sequencing of the first human genome project and around the year 2015 1000 genome project brought a significant number of the whole genome sequence to the research community so by the year 2018 there are like 1 million whole genomes were sequenced so today there is ever increasing number of the data sets available that help researcher to understand about cellular and biological processes eventually this data is continuously growing at its at an exponential rate as we already learned about there are the different types of the omics depending upon the biomolecules that it include for example phenomics when you deal with phenotype genomics which deals with the mutations or the new uh, mutations that are snp or epigenetic which deals with the methylation data transcriptomics which deals with the rna transcript now many of us must on many of you are here must be the biologist and mostly biologists were trained in the basic biological processes and then specialized in certain area where we gain both knowledge and the experience from the experimental data many of the example that we learn from and the information we accumulated came from carefully designed experiments where certain assumptions were tested so the general data from these experiment confirms some of the assumptions and those were recorded as proven hypothesis so all the biologists submit their data to different public repositories for example ncvi particularly um, gene expression omnibus one of the major repository where you can find process data so that this data is continuously growing uh, almost at exponential rate so the growth in high throughput sequencing of the cancer genome and the transcriptome has produced a big data problem that precludes many cancer biologists and oncologists from gleaning knowledge from these data regarding the nature of malignant processes as well as the relationship between tumor genomic profiles and the treatment response so that's why it is important to learn about what are these different data types and how efficiently we can process and analyze and that's most of genomics and transcriptomics data that we are going to learn in our upcoming session how we can process that data and eventually how we can analyze now there are uh, important repositories from where you can find uh, these different omics data types for example one of the major repository like geo where you can find already processed data then if you are interested in raw sequencing data then there is an important repository that is sequence read archive that is sra which maintains raw sequencing data then there is like bioproject where you can find different research projects 
related all which are already completed by different researchers so besides there are other specific repositories like array express gdc data portal cosmic and then human protein atlas where you can find data specific Uh, related to the oncology, and beside that, you can also find various repositories related to the viruses. Now, depending upon your research interest, you can obtain data from these repositories. So, this is uh, one of the dedicated repositories, NCVI virus, which maintains metadata and uh, sequence data for various types of viruses. so if you have any question regarding that please feel free to post your query in the chat box and before we further proceed now let's first understand what what is the hypothesis approach particularly from the biologist perspective so usually for a biologist Dep uh, research depend upon the observation observation that give rise to a question that can be definitely be answered using data generated in an experiment and this hypothesis further can be confirmed depending upon the experiment design or can be rejected depending upon the result now hypothesis eventually depends upon or accepted or rejected based on what are the analysis results that you have obtained but the collection of the results are the actual knowledge so our big data is changing the way we view the results or we analyze these results so results are often at times the data itself particularly when you dealing with when you are dealing with a bioinformatic so then what is the data driven or a bioinformatic approach okay so is it some i'm not clearly audible so narika can you let me know i'm not audible uh, no ma'am you are audible to us we can hear you clearly okay thank you okay so the apart from the biologist perspective research now what is the big data approach big data drive approach or data driven research approach let's understand what are the important aspect here so for example a big data approach or data driven approach is more dependent on the data itself rather than the hypothesis so here for example if a disease outbreak could be forecasted like baby a weather so then communities could set up the protective measure to control their impact so their goal is to develop a better understanding how a disease spread eventually how we are able to predict disease outbreak as we know that researchers are generating large volumes of biological data which are changes the way the biomedical research is done an important aspect of the big data analysis is to is the ability to identify trends in the omics data itself without any experimental or clinical me mechanistic so typically this approach is known as data driven approach so next of course by harnessing machine learning tools one can discover the relationship or trends in the data that are not obvious enabling researcher to ask specific question on the basis of computer identified trends now let's understand how we can proceed for data driven research so typically this research approach has major six steps for example first of all we identify our research question or maybe we also try to identify alternative to our perception next we go for the literature review where we search who has already invested invest uh, invest investigated this problem before us what approach has been taken in the past to solve this particular research question subsequently we design our prediction models or we formulate a hypothesis 
how might specific variable influence the result of chosen predictive model? So once we done with these steps, then we proceed to gather the data, collect information about the variables, uh, particularly based on our hypothesis that now we are designing. Eventually, we had it towards a data analysis where we can apply various statistical models to evaluate the correctness of approach. And then we repeat this procedure until we finally identify the best method. Eventually, you come, eventually we uh, compile our all results into a story. Now, let's understand how a big data helping clinicians and researchers in precision medicine. Let's take a simple example. For example, we have a patient and it gives a tumor sample to a lab, which completes its genetic, uh, genetic genomics or protein analysis and then send the data to a bioinformatician. So finally, a bioinformatician analyzes the sample for omics data type. Maybe it, he's or she's or a, a bioinformatician analyzing mutation data, maybe a, gen, a, g, a genomics data that he, or a transcriptomics data or a protein data. So accordingly, they find some important genes or a protein or maybe a, a SNP feature that are significant for a particular tumor condition or a therapeutic condition. So from the results based on the omics data analysis, a drug therapy can be recommended that closely align with the patient's molecular profile. This would include both the maybe FDA approved drugs or maybe unapproved drugs. Then you will see the or researcher analyze the effect. And those genes or signatures which assessing the drug effect are known as predictive biomarkers. So based on the analysis results, one can identify important diagnostic, prognostic, and predictive biomarkers. Eventually, the physician as well as the patients are provided with additional evidence, including what are the adverse reactions, failure rates, and other treatment trade-offs they should consider when they making final decision at the beginning or during the course of a treatment. So the patient and physician in turn provide information to strengthen a uh, database for the future, uh, future patient uh, drug designing. So during this program, you are going to, we are going to explore different projects. So based on the transcriptomics, genomics or metagenomics data, now let's let take one example of one of the project that is CDX project that we are going to use particularly for transcriptomics data analysis. So this is one of the publications from which we have taken the data. So in the year 2016, there was a research article published in the Onco Target where Broadfit et al. have explored whole transcriptome profiling of a patient-rife genograph or PDX model as a tool to identify both tumor and stromal specific biomarkers. So the authors investigated RNA-seq as a hypothesis-free tool to generate independent tumor and stromal biomarkers and explore tumor stroma interactions by exploiting human murine department specificity of the PDX models. So in this study, authors have explored nearly 79 PDX models, and they determined that most stroma can be separated into distinct clusters, and each cluster is correspond to a specific stromal uh, cell type. So in our program, we will try to perform various NGS data analysis using these PDX models. Now let's also understand what are the PDX models. So PDX models are generated when a fresh tumor, uh, fresh tumor tissue obtained directly from the patient, and then it uh, implanted subcutaneously or orthotopically into immune deficient mice. So as such, these PDX models maintain principal histological, clinical, and molecular characteristics of the original human tumor while it remains biologically stable. So since these PDX models are more closely resembled and recapitulate 
tumor growth in human then standard in vitro cell line so the, that's why these cdx models are nowadays more preferred model for preclinical drug development studies so here we are going to uh, explore particularly pdx project for breast cancer so here we have two breast cancer subtypes that is er positive and triple negative now what is er positive and triple negative so estrogen receptor positive breast cancer is identified by the presence of estrogen receptor on its cell membrane while triple negative breast cancer lacks three important membrane receptor on its membrane so this is just one difference that make er uh, er po uh, positive breast cancer as more treatable while triple negative is more aggressive subtype of the breast uh, breast cancer now let me show you how you can learn at least to get an overview about uh, precision medicine so let me take you to some of the courses that you can explore so just give me a second and let me know how many of you have already account on learnomics so how many of you have account on learn platform navya liliana okay great so here some of the courses that you must go through to just understand the basic understanding about these genomics precision medicine or the application of the bioinformatics so here the first course as ilia also shown you that is bites and molecules so this is the one of the course where you will get an overview about different types of terms if you are uh, very much new to the biology so you will get the basic terminology in terms of these uh, dna structure protein structure genomics then transcriptomics so these are the primary courses so then another important course specifically what are the different applications of the bioinformatics so here is another important course that is introduction to the bioinformatics particularly that is course number 1 so this is the course where you will learn the different applications of the bioinformatics in diverse fields including healthcare as well as agriculture so this is the first course that you must complete these are the two courses that i would recommend you now let me also show you how you can get familiar if you are interested to learn programming skills so for example here in the course number 8 in bites and molecules you will find the simplest simple course that is introduction to the bioinformatics language so here we are introducing r so here you will learn how you can install r on your system and next how you can write or read a file in r so here under the getting started with r so you will learn for example this is the simple code block and here this co code block is given and then each step what uh, each syntax is defined below for example what is the meaning of free table what we are doing with this so it uh, for uh, it will help you to understand what is why we are doing header equal to true separator what you understand by separator row name so then how you can visualize your data now let me also show you with an exercise so you are also learn about what are the what is the matrix or data frame in r in simplest way so for example in the matrix so usually when you have one type of data whether it is numeric or whether you have numeric as well as a character so uh, in case of the data frame when you are dealing with different types of data types that is numeric as well as non numeric data so then you will learn how you can read different types of files so here in the each code you will learn how you can check the dimensions of your data so after the learning so then how you can visualize your data in the next step you will learn how you can actually exec execute your code so here some syntax is missing so you need to complete for example here is the simplest 
code where you just need to understand like what is this read table so let me just show you for example we have this file so let me copy this now for example how i can read this data but before that i should visualize what kind of data i have so if you just copy the link in the browser in any other tab you will see like here you have this id so you have these columns in the first column you have genes then you have samples so now how we can read this kind of data how these columns are separated from each other whether they are separated by a comma whether they are separated by semicolon or a tab so how i can read this kind of data so what i can do first let's create a simple object data you can write it as anything so as r is an object oriented language so we are creating an object data so then we are assigning our uh, our data into this object so how i can read simple table uh, simple gene expression table or simple file in r so there is simple comma uh, syntax that is read dot table so then here we need to provide the path of our file if you are doing it on your r studio then you can provide the directory directory folder name here we have url so we need to provide the url next i need to define whether my file has header or not so if i am looking at this file so here i have header i have row name so i need to define header equal to true then whether there we have row name equal to 1 in the first row we have row name then how the columns in this file are separated from each other so there is one simple function with the sep separator so here we need to provide what kind of separator in our data for example here we have tab separator now how we can check the dimension so as here it is given you need to check the dimensions of data so here a simple command that is dim we can check the dimensions of data so i missed actually d so that is why it's showing the error if you look at here you will find in the console you will find the error so it automatically could not find function d because i missed d so now i can uh, i corrected that now i can so you can see success running code and answer is correct so this is how we can do if you are don't know how to install or on your system so you can directly do this in simply this learn platform here we giving you that option as well so, uh, similarly you can visualize for example head command with the head command you can visualize top row so we can visualize now i can comment and of course in any programming language so this hash sign is for the comment so that is just a comment it is not a command so now we can although it will show answer is incorrect why because actually when i have this we have defined these answers so we have not specially we are just checking the dimensions so that is why otherwise you can uh, simply if your code is running successfully it means your code is uh, running here so you can learn like how you can read or you can draw simple box plot in the, of your data for example here once we read the data we can summarize our data in the form of box plot so if i run this command you will see here i got simple box plot so then you will learn how to add color title to the box plot so here you can learn or explore these kind of uh, simplest code first here if you are new to r otherwise there are main uh, main courses like data science in r or data science in python if you want to explore much more 
So this is how you can run any code or uh, on learn platform. If you have any question, please feel free to post your query on the chat box. So in the next, uh, so here today, the whatever the main assignments that I am giving you, please go to go through this particular lesson that is introduction to the bioinformatics because it will give you like what are the different applications of the bioinformatics and go through the whites and molecules because they are very introductory lessons. You will learn about simplest terms in the biology as well as the bioinformatics. So that, those are the two assignments. And on the Monday, we are going to learn about genomic data analysis and what are the different file formats and that we are going to cover in our next session. So thank you if you have a question feel free to post your query in chat box and I will uh, address. Meanwhile, I am passing, uh, handing over this session back to Sonalika so that she, if you yet to register, so you, she will explain registration process. So over to you, Sonalika. Thank you so much, ma'am. So first of all, I'll just uh, go through the registration process and then I have to answer a few of the queries uh, that the participants had. So the first thing is that uh, as Elia has already told that if you are yet to register yourself, so the first session was uh, free for everyone just because uh, uh, the interested parents had to have an insight of what all would be covered. So here is the link to the uh, program page. You can register yourself with any of the level that you would like to enroll in here on the program page itself. So now there are three levels, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. And these levels have different sorts of uh, facilities you can say that you would be provided with. And uh, it depends on you which level you want to enroll for. Now, the second thing is that uh, on the Omics Logic Learn portal, you have two parts. The first part is the courses tab, and the second part is the programs tab. And those people who just want to go through the asynchronous course material at their own pace and get an understanding of various sorts of fields which are mentioned here on omics and data science and also we have uh, sample projects which you can go through and learn from as in few of them are mentioned here as well. So you just have to click on courses. Let's say you will get you will get a list of courses that you can go through. And if you want to have a look on the projects, then just pick the projects and go through the projects. Very simple, very easy. Now that is the way uh, you can get the access to the courses. And that is for a basic subscription of dollar tech. And uh, those who are enrolled, someone saying something okay so if you have any doubt please uh, post in the chat box uh, can i continue so i was saying that for the courses uh, the basic subscription module is dollar 10 and those who have taken the basic subscription module for dollar 10 they uh, will just have the access to the courses and not to the programs. Now, Introduction to Big Data Bioinformatics is a program in which we are going to have online sessions and uh, mentor guidance, one-on-one -on -one mentor guidance. And we will be also providing with various course materials. And these programs, they're like specialized programs for the fields that we have talked about. So, uh, and also I had a question by Shri Hari. Uh, Shri Hari, can you please ask your question once again? I lost a question uh, in the chat box on top. You can unmute yourself and ask. Hello, everyone. Can you tell me about uh, how to uh, start with the courses? Is it? how to start with the courses, right? So the first thing that you have to begin with is the introduction to a bioinformatics course that is mentioned in the courses tab oh. and that Dr. Harpri took you through as well. And uh, also yeah. as ma'am has given you an assignment that you have to go through the course. And uh, now there are two type of bioinformaticians, those who are interested to learn coding and those who are not, right? So if you are one of them who wants to learn about R and Python and get into data 
science so to begin with you have to start with getting started with r and python courses right those participants uh, those who don't want yeah, uh, to yes yeah, shri hari i'm so sorry i had a background disturbance could not uh, hear you please repeat yeah. Can you tell me when the T Bio Info uh, portal access can be obtained? Yes, so you all will get your credentials for the server just after this session. I'll be sharing your credentials with you, and these yeah. credentials okay. would be active for one month for the uh, course duration, okay. right? And mm -hmm. uh, you can uh, navigate through the portal and browse different sorts of courses that you can begin with and then uh, get along. And you will be given guidance and notes and course materials and assignments as well, along with the program. And you can take your doubts in the next session. So you go through the material that we discussed today yeah, yeah. and then huh. you uh, take huh. your doubts in the next session. And make sure that you sure. all are there on the uh, like um, join the Slack channel, yeah. and also uh, you can find yeah, the yeah, recording of this particular uh, session on the program page. I'll upload that, and you'll be able to see that. And also, I'll share the recording via mail and the Slack channel. Yeah, thank you. Great. Uh, Iman, the access to the server is for a month. And also those who have taken, the, now there are many people here who have taken the basic membership of $10, they will have the access to the server's example pipelines only. But those who are a part of the program, that is the introduction to Big Data Bioinfo program, they will have the access, the educational license to the server and uh, the other various pipelines would be unlocked for them and they can practice on that. But those who are a part just with the basic subscription, they just have the access to the demo pipelines and not to the other pipelines. Will I have access to precision medicine courses? Uh, Precision medicine uh, program is already done, actually, Melinda. You were enrolled in one of the precision medicine sessions, right? So yes, definitely. I'll share, I'll share the recordings with you because you were already a part of the uh, program. And did you uh, download your certificate? If not, then please let me know so that, so that I can provide you with your certificate as well. And one thing is that I told you that you all have to click on complete session icon after watching the recording. It's uh, just because so that you can uh, get your certificate in the programs uh, in the in your profile. Yes, Saima, I'll share the Slack channel link with all the customers. Yes, sure, Melinda, you can uh, chat with me separately as well. I'll just share my Skype profile ID and I'm also available on Slack. You can just drop a message on Slack and take your doubts. Okay, so if you have any other doubts, you can mail me on marketing at the rate pine.bio and I'll be happy to help you all. Thank you all for joining the session today. It was really very nice to meet you all. Uh, yes, we do interact. Um, so these sessions, they are not like we just, just uh, as in the uh, speaker comes and give lectures and go. No, we, we definitely interact and we take doubts and we uh, ask participants if they have any doubts or they're stuck somewhere and also take their insights on what they feel about the topic. Melinda, you can uh, connect with me over Skype or Slack. I'll share my... Um, profile ID with you over your mail address. I have your mail address. And also please make sure that uh, our mail address marketing at the red pine is added to your address book because we have been getting responses from people that our mails are uh, going in their spam box because we interact with a lot of people. So uh, the spam trigger gets uh, active. The timing would be this only, Shrihari, 7 p.m. IST. 
AM CST. Uh, yes, Iman, the dollar ten that you paid yesterday was a basic subscription membership for the courses. To enroll for the program, we have three very uh, three different levels: beginner, intermediate, advanced, which are for 45, 60, uh, 45, 60, and seventy five. And we have this basic fee structure just to sustain the program. Uh, the basic fee structure is actually for the, li the license uh, that you're going to get on the server. Because you would be having five terabyte of space allocated to uh, each one of the users for your usage and your uploading data and working on it. That's where we have a, a particular fee. Great. Okay, then I think uh, doubts are cleared, but if not, you anytime have the option to mail me and I'd be happy to respond. Thank you everyone for joining and thank you Dr. Harpreet for uh, giving us such an insightful session today on introduction to big data bioinformatics. And uh, we would be now meeting uh, for the next session where we are going to talk about genomics. Uh, so, Iman, uh, the research fellowship program is about carrying out an independent research project under mentor guidance. So, being a part of the research fellowship program is uh, a different sort of thing where you get the access to uh, the portal's courses, specifically the courses and the sample projects for whatever time period you enroll, be it three months, be it six months. And uh, then you carry out your research project under mentor guidance. That is you begin with completing the course material first and then you fill in the research proposal form. Your form gets approved. And uh, then obviously our mentors are going to help you modify your research question if required. And uh, then you start working on your research project under mentor guidance. You will get to know from your mentor from where you have to look for the, da for the data set and then what are the various steps uh, you have to apply on your data set to uh, prepare your data and then how you have to work on it, how you analyze your results, uh, interpret your results in that matter, and then going ahead with publishing your work in any of the reputed journals. So that is the process of a research fellowship program. Uh, sure. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Have a great day.